Hello, this is a video of one of my newer controllers. Um, if you have any questions, the easy way to get me is plow controllers with a dash at tdwc.com. Okay, it's uh, basically a normal type controller looking. It's, this one's wired, it's not one of my wireless ones, really, but it is. But anyway, we'll get to that. Um, this will run for any straight blade that has a six pin Western Fisher or a Meyer six or the other pin, the 12 pin version, the older straight blades. It would, can also be used for Hinnikers, uh, Boss, who else, Northman, Snow Dog, just about any, like I said, any older straight blade controller, that's what this would work for. All right, basically, this has a few extra features though. First one is it will turn on an ex accessory lights for you if you have them. On a Hineker that's built in automatically. They have a, the headlights don't go on until you turn it on with a controller. But for other units, if you want to use a beacon, you can use this to turn it on. All you can do is add a relay to the wiring and it'll turn on. The way to get to that, push the power button once. What it does, that turns on the outside, the back lighting, and it turns on the float light. That means just the lights are on. The controller itself is not powered on. If you want to power on the controller, you hit it again and your red light comes on. That puts your power up. Then you have your conventional left, right, tap for down, or if you hold it for half a second, it goes into float mode. Float turns off while you're doing left and right, that way it doesn't dig into the ground. Uh, these functions also have a timeout on them, which means if you hold the button for too long, they'll shut down. Hear the motor straining, and then it shuts down. It's timed out for, I think, about one, two, three, four, five, six, about six seconds left to right. And the up also has a timeout, which is about three seconds. which on mine is perfect, it doesn't whine at all, but it's not totally in full float either, if I were going downhill it would be a little longer. Okay, that's your basic functions, now the added features here, you have to do a little bit of extra, you can run it just the way it is. Uh, the only one feature that will work with a, without extra wiring is the shake feature, which is used to shake off snow, my brother likes it, but I haven't tried it yet, because um, I don't plow that much. If it's down, what it'll do is raise the plow up first, and it'll shake it up for you, and then it'll go back to down if it wasn't float. Okay, now we'll take it out and float, and we'll go to another feature. This requires a reverse signal to come to the controller. This is for your auto plow. That allows the plow to go up and down using the shifter of your truck, so you have to steal a power from either the reverse lights or the neutral safety switch on your tranny or with the newer trucks you can take them from backup cameras and some of them have them in a place in a fuse box I think Dodge does and maybe Ford you have one right in the front of the truck that you can tap into the, for your uh, reverse lights so what it does in auto plow you hit the button once that puts you in the back drag mode it turns on the blue light okay in the back drag mode when you put it in reverse drops your plow so I'm gonna watch out for my other truck back there now, now when you go forward again go back to your garage door or whatever raise the plow until you decide to put it in reverse again Meyer has something like this but they don't have my feature while it's in auto plow, you can turn the plow using your blinkers. So that being said, you can draw do an entire driveway and make your plow move with your blinkers and never touch the controller. Now we'll go into the next mode. Next mode will be to push snow. So you hit the button again and it turns on that. So now, when you drive, it's pushing. Again, the liquors work the same way. 
Verse. And go back to top mode. Turn your five one. And then to get out of the auto plow mode, you hit the button again. And what that does is turn out your lights. Then you go back into your regular mode. Now while you're in plow, uh, auto plow, if you decide you're not going to run the blicker lights, you can move the left and right using the controller. I'll show you that. Let me do that real quick. Put it in back drag. And like I said, you can turn the plow using the controller if you don't run your uh, blicker wires. Okay, now take it out of auto plow. I'm going to turn it off. Now I just added a experimental feature. Well, not experimental, but this one's a prototype, which includes this. Now I can run the plow without the controller. Well, the controller has to be there, but this will run the plow through the controller. It's wireless. Uh, this is just a prototype remote. It's not fancy like normally I do them like this. I've got the actual little nice letters and the finish and everything. This one was, like I said, I didn't get to finishing that up yet. Basically, you turn on the remote, and even if the controller is off, you can move the plow left, right, down. Down and down on this prototype version, it goes automatically into float. On the, the final one, it may be a little different. Okay, now this controller right now is not on. If you want to turn it on, you can turn it on from here too. Oop, hit the wrong button. That turns on the controller. Now, the reason to turn on the controller is if you want to use the remote for auto plow. So, to do auto plow, you do the same thing. If you want to back drag, you hit the pull button. Whoop, jump past the gear. Reverse. Do the same thing. As you can see, the blue light did turn on on the remote. I mean, on a regular controller. I keep calling it a remote, but it's technically not. And you can also make your left and right come from here, or if you have the blinkers, same thing. So basically, it works the exact same except everything's on the remote. So one good thing about this is my brother tends to get stuck once in a while, and he says it comes in real handy when you're outside trying to get snow out from around the plow and stuff. It's also handy when you're mounting and dismounting the plow with the older plows, because you can go outside and do whatever you want to do, or if you're working on it. And to get out of the auto plow on this one right now, we just power everything down that takes it out of auto plow. I might add a button just for turn off the auto plow and leave the rest on. I don't know yet. But as I said this one's still in prototype mode as far as the remote addition to it. The controller itself is fully functional and ready to go. If you have any questions, like I said, uh, drop me an email. That's the best way to get a hold of me. If we can see that um, camera's behind me, I can't tell what I'm viewing. So hopefully this video looks okay. Alright, thanks for watching.